Hey guys, this is Shagwa coming at you with the uh, Bunny Strike news for the week. We got a couple interesting things, but the first one I want to hit on is one that I'm very excited about. Um, it's just an addition to the Final Fantasy VII remake announcement that we covered in last week's news. There were some other things announced along with that that I'm pretty excited for, with the exception of the fact that these seem to be announced for mobile only, at least as far as we know now. Uh, fingers crossed that we'll see some of these either ported to the Switch or other consoles along the way, because I am a big console guy. But along with Final Fantasy Remake Integrate, which is going to be uh, basically the PS5 version of Final Fantasy Remake, um, they announced the Final Fantasy VII First Soldier, which is kind of a Battle Royale type game, but in the Final Fantasy universe. It's set, I think, during the, the Wu-Tai War. So it's going to be pre-Final Fantasy VII events. Um, probably a lot of characters that we haven't seen, and maybe a few familiar ones that we know were involved in that conflict. Uh, they also announced Ever Crisis, and what this seems to be is kind of a... If you saw Final Fantasy f uh, 15 on the Switch that had that chibi style, I think they called it the Pocket Edition, uh, it seems like they're giving that same treatment to the entire Final Fantasy uh, 7 franchise with Final Fantasy 7, the main game, Crisis Core, Ever Crisis, and Dirge of Cerberus, along with a couple other... Um, things that are circling in that universe and bringing it all into one convenient location where you can play it. It's going to be a mobile game. Both of these games are going to be free to play with microtransactions, but they do look like they're putting a lot of hard work into it and they, they look very cool. So again, for me, I'm very excited, but I would love to see these on consoles. I am just not much of a mobile phone gamer. So that's just in addition to our last week's news. And, and uh, honestly, I'm pretty excited about it. I like that they're expanding the universe um, maybe there's some hope that we're going to get a remake of Crisis Core in here. Or not, not a remake, but a port. That would be great. <laughs> but that's just speculation. I'll leave that alone. Uh, in other news, and this one's actually really cool, the developers of Ghost of Tsushima are receiving an award. And basically what it is is they're going to be made am uh, ambassadors for uh, tourism. So they're going to be made ambassadors for tourism by the governor of Tsushima Island. And basically, the reason that they're doing that is because they've been um, bringing a lot of attention to Su Su Tsushima Island. And he's very happy about that. A lot of people are coming and want wanting to learn the true history um, based off of what they experienced in the game. And he also really appreciates how it was represented in the game um, and the fact that it is generating a lot of interest. He has a lot of hopes for when the COVID-19 situation is over and, and tourism can begin again. And he hopes that these guys will be able to um, uh, accomplish a lot with that honor that's been bestowed upon them. And he's also stated that they only need to have that honor um, as long as they're willing to to have it. It's not uh, a position that is being forced upon them by any means. And they do share some company with some great other other great um, Japanese nationals who have also been bestowed this honor. So pretty cool news. Um, exciting stuff for a great game and, and the developers of it. The two gentlemen that are going to be getting that award are Nate Fox and Jason Connell. And this news, by the way, comes from VideoGamesChronicle.com. So you can check out the full article there to get more information on it. Also, there's going to be a new studio opening up. It's kind of a dream team. So you have guys from Blizzard, uh, Valve, and Riot Games. People that have worked on games like Team Fortress 2, um, League of Legends, and what was the Blizzard one they worked on? Halo. Oh, Bungie. That's what it is. So it's the Bungie guys as well. So Halo and Destiny. Uh, so a lot of dudes with a lot of experience. In their recent round of funding, they generated like $37.5 million to get this studio opened up. And their first game that they're going to be working on is going to be a co-op game. Uh, apparently they intend to receive a lot of input from the community as they develop this game as well. So that's pretty exciting. I like it when you get people with a lot of experience who have made some great games coming together together. Um, to bring some new stuff to the table. There's a couple of physical games that are going to be releasing here. So Frontier Saga Remaster is coming out. That's going to get a physical release on the Switch and the PS4. Um, this is for people like me that like to own their games. Uh, so I, I pay a lot of attention to whether the game is only going to be a digital release or a physical release. And so I'm glad to see that that's going to be getting a physical release. Uh, unfortunately, it's import only, but the the countries where it is releasing will have English on the cartridges, so you'll be able to import those and still play in English. And 
By the way, if you ever want to stay up to date on like everything that's coming out, especially if it's Switch related for physical releases, Switch Watch TV on YouTube is a great resource. It's one I use a lot. I love the guys over there. They do a great job. They're very clear with their information as well. We've also got some release announcements. So we're going to be getting Disgaea 6. Um, looks like it's going to be June 29th for the Switch in North America and Europe, and July 6th for uh, the Asian region regions. So that'll be awesome. There was also an announcement for um, Fantasian, which is a game that's made with like physical dioramas. So it's, it's going to have a totally new art direction and look to it. It's from uh, some of the original Final Fantasy creators, which has got me very excited as a Final Fantasy fan. Unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, depending on where your kind of loyalties lie, it seems to be uh, releasing only for iOS um, devices as well as Apple Arcade. So that's awesome news for those guys that are uh, Apple fans and have those products. Um, I'm hoping that it's a limited exclusive and that we'll eventually see it on other mobile devices as well, because I would love to get my hands on that game and play it. It looks great. Uh, Alien Fireteam has been announced. That's going to be coming out, out on all the major systems with the exception of Switch. So PS4, PS5, Xbone, and Xbone X. And that's going to be a co-op Alien uh, or game based in the Alien universe. We're also getting Blaster Master 3, which I've played the original Blaster Master and really liked it. I know the second one came out not that long ago for the Switch. So I've been meaning to pick that one up and just haven't yet, but... It's good news to see that they're even adding a third one into that into that series. Uh, really simple game, really fun game. Kind of a cross between shoot 'em ups and side scrollers. So it's pretty fun. Th check it out if you haven't checked it out. And those are kind of the main things that we're seeing. And by the way, the article for that one is from NintendoLink.com, so you can see the article there and check that out. And in other news, and I'll give you guys the sources for these as well if you want to go into depth on them. I'm just going to cut through these ones really quickly. We're going to have. Um, there's been a mod that's been made for Fallout 4 that kind of brings Silent Hill into the Fallout universe. Um, so if you're into the mod community, um, this is probably something you're, it's already on your radar, and it is pretty exciting. It looks like they put a lot of work into it, and it's a good, like a good mod. There's a lot of hype behind it. Uh, if you're not into mods, uh, it might be a little tricky to figure out how to add this into your system, but uh, it might be a good entry point, too, to get into the modding community because when, when they add stuff like that that really adds to the universe, it makes it a lot of fun. There was another dude. You can call him a hacker or a modder. just depends on your kind of flavor, I guess. But that guy has basically taken the horrible load times for GTA V and by himself reduced those load times in a significant way. So this isn't something that, as of yet, has been implemented officially by Rockstar Games. But kudos to this guy, man, because that was a huge problem with that game. GTA V is a pretty solid game, but those load times were some of the worst that I've ever seen. So, and it, it impresses me that one, one guy with some technical know-how was able to go in and solve one of the biggest issues of one of the largest games that we've seen in a long time. I mean, it's been on how many consoles now, how many generations of consoles. So kudos to that guy. Someone should give him a raise. <laughs> Maybe Rockstar should bring him on. And then there's some changes coming to the PlayStation Store. So PlayStation Store is going to be dropping support for movie and TV rentals. Um, that just seems like part of their future evaluation plans. They've decided that it's not really worth it to continue with those particular venues. So those will be being cut from the PlayStation Store. Um, you can check the news out on that at uh, PlayStation.com on their blog. Also with PlayStation Store... You're going to be getting Ratchet and Clank until the end of March. Now, if you have PlayStation Plus um, for PlayStation 5, this is already part of that collection of PlayStation games that you get free with that PlayStation Plus subscription on PlayStation 5. Um, but this is not something that you have to have PlayStation Plus for. You'll be able to, to claim that game for free until the end of March and own it as if it were your game, not requiring PlayStation Plus at all. So head over there to the PlayStation Store, get that downloaded while you can. Um, Ratchet and Clank is a pretty cool series. It re reminds me a lot of Jack and da Daxter, which is a series that I really liked. And this will be a great opportunity to kind of get a feel about what that game's about before the new one comes out. And if you guys haven't seen the trailer for the new one, I'll say this. Like, Ratchet and Clank looks like a fun game. It's not, like, one of those ones that's really up my alley. But 
watching the trailer for the new one, I was like, they're doing some cool stuff in here. So ev even I've been tempted to check out the newest one. So I'll be claiming this game and giving it a playthrough myself. There's more news on that at TheVerge.com. And probably at PlayStation.com as well. I'm sure they've got a blog page posted for that. And then in other PlayStation news, PlayStation has de decided to, decades later, jump on the banana phone train. Um, it's not really a phone. They've just put out a patent for a controller that seems to be shaped like a banana. And there's because it's something that was found in a patent search, there's not really a lot of information on what this is for, why they put the patent on it. Maybe they're like going to really extreme lengths for an April Fool's joke for next month. My thought is that uh, we're going to see some Donkey Kong spin-off game come to PlayStation because Wild sh have it like very, very much look like a banana. Uh, but we'll see. Time will tell us what this is going to bring. But looks like Sony's still looking into the future, still bringing things out. Uh, Tyson mentioned last week about PlayStation VR 2, which I'm very excited about and he was also excited about as well. So I like to see that these companies are uh, looking forward and still continuing to find ways to bring us better content and better games. Uh, that pretty much sums up what we've got in the news this week, but you know, news is always coming in. So we'll hit you next week with anything, anything else that comes out. And if there's anything major, we'll pop in and probably do a, an early video just to cover that one. Uh, appreciate you guys stopping by though. It's been a lot of fun covering the news with you. And I hope you guys are excited as I am for the, uh, Frontier Saga Remaster, as well as that, what was that called? Fantasia? I gotta find it. That game was awesome. Fantasian. I was pretty much right on the money. Don't judge me. But yeah, if you guys are excited about Final Fantasy stuff, RPG news, you'll hear a lot of that from me when I come on and do these news segments. Uh, but I'll also try and keep you updated on a vast majority of other things as well. I'm not, I'm not gonna lock myself into just the things that I love. So, been a pleasure, guys. Have a good one.